How's it going? Welcome to another All About RVs. I'm Jared Gillis, and today we're going to be comparing some solar. Uh, we're setting up an MPPT charge controller and a PWM charge controller, and we want to see how those go head to head so that we can get the most out of the panels that we buy and, and maybe even save a little money if we don't need to buy as many panels as we originally thought. Today was a nice sunny day and so I thought it'd be great for testing out quite a few setups and different uh, scenarios with solar that might help you make a better informed decision. So here is the setup and what we ended up doing. We have four Renogy panels, so we split them up into two different systems. So we have two panels on each system. And on this side, we have an MPPT charge controller. And then on this side, we have a PWM charge controller. And those are the two main controllers that you're gonna find out there for charging your batteries with a solar array. Now, I wanted to keep this as, as fair and even as possible. That's why I only did two panels per, uh, that way we can compare them side by side with where the sun is in, in the exact same position for both of them, uh, we can see how it affects both systems. I'll put a link into the description to all the, the stuff that we're talking about here so you can check uh, current prices and anything else that you're wanting to, to check out in these systems. The MPPT charge controller, we'll look at that one first, it's going to be a little bit different because it, it's going to be more efficient. It can take a higher voltage and it can convert that into usable power for your batteries. Okay, I know this can be a little bit confusing, so uh, let's try and simplify it a little bit. Uh, these solar panels, uh, this one's at 100 watts. So it's going to send power to your MPPT charge controller, and what that does is it's going to look at what would be best for your battery. So it's gonna optimize the voltage that it's gonna send to it, and it's gonna send the maximum amperage, because the amps going in is what counts, if it's at the proper voltage. That's why they're more efficient. They're not gonna waste the wattage that's coming from your solar panel to the charge controller. Now, the PWM, uh, if you send a higher voltage to it, it, it can't use that voltage and convert it into amperage that it can push into your, your batteries. It's just gonna be lost. It's going to lose that energy and it's gonna expel it in the form of heat. Now, that's the neat thing about the MPPT charge controller is it can convert some of that higher voltage and turn it into amperage that it's pushing into your batteries so that you can use more power that your panels are producing. Let's look at how we set those up differently. So on this side, we ended up wiring these panels in series. And the reason we did that is because this can handle the higher voltage when you do it in series, you add the voltage and not the amperage. So because of that, you could even potentially run a thinner gauge wire from your panels to your charge controller because the, the amperage, you're not increasing that. It's, it's going at a lower amperage and a higher voltage. So when we wire these in series, we tie the negative and the positive together on these panels, and then we're left with a negative and a positive out of both sides of those panels. And so that is what ties into our MPPT charge controller. Now on this side with the PWM charge controller, uh, we want to wire our panels in parallel so that you add the amperage. So it's sending the, the best amount of amperage it can for this little guy because it can't convert that voltage and we don't wanna increase the voltage. So we add the amperage together. So we use these connectors that we connected the panels together. It ties the positive and the positive together out of the panels and the negatives and the negatives together. And then those positives and negatives coming out of that go directly into our charge controller. That is the quick version of what we set up here. So uh, let's get into some of those tests that we did earlier today. So here's the first test. This is just kind of a, a normal baseline. This gives us a tilted panel towards the south. Right now the MPPT is pulling in uh, around 12 amps and then our PWM is pulling in just over eight amps, it's uh, 8.7. Now let's start putting this through some tests. So uh, as if you were out camping and you might have a tree nearby that shades uh, one of your panels. So what does it do to each of these systems if we have shade on a panel? For our man-made shade, we're going to use this little table to shade part of it. So we can see that the shade hurt the MPPT a lot more as far as percentage wise, but it was just over a half amp lower uh, once that shade was on the panel compared to the PWM. So what if there's no shade and we don't bother to tilt them, but we leave them flat? Mm -hmm. 
In this scenario, the MPPT went from eight and a half to nine and a half amps, and the PWM is holding steady just below five amps at 4.9. Now with those results, I'm kind of curious as that sun begins to get lower in the sky as it gets later, how are these going to perform? I have my suspicions, but uh, I want to see how they continue to pull in the amps for the battery and for how long. It's three o'clock now, and we'll give it a few hours to see what happens. Well, that sun's just about ready to set. We only have like, I don't know, 15, 10, 15 minutes more. And the MPPT charge controller was at uh, just over an amp, like 1.04. And the PWM was at 0.7 of an amp. So um, that's where they're at for now. So let's take a minute and talk about what some of these results mean. So here's what I gather from what we did today. Uh, the MPPT outperformed the PWM in just about every test we did, except for one, and that was the shade. And it, it went way above and beyond the PWM. It wasn't just like a, a half an amp or something like that. It was a significant amount of power going into your battery bank. To me, it was almost bordering on that point of sometimes it was it was almost as if the you could have added another panel to the PWM to try and catch up to it. And if we would have had three on the PWM and two on the MPPT, it almost would have been more of a fair battle except for the shade. So with all this information, it should help make an informed decision. Uh, do you wanna tilt your panels? Do you wanna do an MPPT? Um, are you worried about shade all the time? Or when you're boondocking, are you able to sit in the sun with your rig and tilt those panels and get the most that you possibly can out of them? Do you wanna put some solar on the roof and maybe some on the ground so that you can tilt it and aim it right for the sun uh, where you want to? Those are the things that you have to decide rather than, than just how many panels and where do I put my charge controller. There's a lot more involved in setting up your solar array system with your charge controller than it is just sticking panels up there and getting them to the batteries. I think for me, I like the idea of putting all 400 watts up on the roof and uh, tilt them when I can, use the MPPT charge controller and I'm gonna wire them in series parallel. Not the whole thing in series, but do two in series, two in series, tie those together in parallel. So that way if one gets shaded, it doesn't kind of knock out the whole thing. Uh, but I'll have those two basically arrays tied in together to make one big array uh, to hopefully be the most efficient I possibly can on the roof. I'm really looking forward to installing this system on the rig, the four panels uh, with the MPPT charge controller. Um, I want to see if I find any faults or anything that I don't like about the system because doing this, I was really impressed with it. And uh, if you tilt your panels or if you uh, use a, a more efficient charge controller like this MPPT one, um, it's almost like you can get away from not buying as many panels uh, if you're wanting to get the, the power out of them that you're looking for. Uh, they're just that much more efficient. So uh, this system here, um, the, the four panels, mounting hardware, the, uh, the wires, the controller, the fuses, uh, it kind of came as a whole complete package. It even came with like a Bluetooth uh, module so I'll be able to connect it to my phone once I get it all installed. I think it was like 750 bucks. So um, that's a really an expensive price for how much power you're getting out of it. Okay, back to it. So again, uh, links in the description down below. So I think that's gonna do it for today. I hope this helped you out. If you like this video, uh, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, or if this is your first time here, uh, we'd love it if you hit that subscribe button. And uh, if remember, if we don't see you on the road, hopefully we'll see you in the next video.